Hey, it's Captain Matt, Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon, and today we're talking about the sad day when you go to sell your boat. Hopefully you're moving into a different one, but how to make sure you get the highest resale value when you go to trade or sell your boat. So let's start with taking care of it, making sure that the boat is perfectly clean when the buyer sees it for the first time. That starts the day you take ownership of your boat by keeping it up, keep the mold and the mildew to a minimum, and making sure that you give that boat a good scrub and detail before you take your pictures and before you have people come and inspect the boat in person. First impressions, they really do make a difference, and trying to save yourself the time, the effort, or the money if you're gonna hire it out, is gonna keep you from getting the most out of your boat on the resale side. Next, the exterior. You gotta polish that gel coat. You gotta shine those tunes up. Um, you gotta make sure that the outboard is looking good or the lower unit's looking good. Get everything shined and polished. Again, first impressions make a big impact when somebody's going to buy a boat. If they come up and the gel coat's all faded or the, the aluminum skin is all, all faded and, and dull, well, guess what? that's gonna be their first impression and they're gonna look at everything else with the view. If they walk up and the boat has their reflection in it, the tunes are looking great, there's no dings or mark, you, you don't have to necessarily polish the aluminum tubes, but just get them looking good. And that's gonna help everything else. Their, their first impression is gonna be, wow, look at this boat. And that's gonna help you uh, increase the, the resale value and help you sell it faster as well. Next maintenance logs. We just did our Sunday night live last night and I talked to a guy that um, is always on Brock. From, he's from Charleston and he had an offer on his pontoon. This is after the pandemic craziness. This was just a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago maybe now, and somebody made him an offer on his boat. He said when he turned the boat over to them is, and when he was showing it to him, he had a two ring, a three ring binder that was two inches thick with everything that he did on that boat. Now, Brock is, is, takes care of his stuff like you would want the previous owner to take care of it. And when you have all that documentation, he even had all of the gallons per hour and the burn and what lake he was on, what body of water he was on, when he upgraded, when he changed things, when he did the oil changes, when he filled up, all of that was documented. That adds a tremendous amount of confidence for the next buyer that, hey, this person really, really took care of their boat. Uh, and that maintenance log and that boat binder can help you increase the resale value, the trade-in value, because you can say, listen, this is all the stuff that's already done to the boat. I just did the services. You know you don't have to put any extra money into this boat because when you take ownership, you're turnkey, you're ready to go, and that's gonna help. Another thing, it's when you are buying your boat, there are some options when you buy your boat that are gonna add value to the boat. There's other options that you're gonna pay for when you buy it that just aren't. So if you're looking to get, if you're at the buying stage and you're like already considering what's my resale gonna be, I wanna make sure that I get a boat that I'm gonna get as much out of it as I can. Well, avoid some of the overrated options that you will pay for, but you won't get a return. So the upgrade on the stereo system, you're gonna get a fractional upgrade on our value on that. Uh, LED lights and the, the extra aesthetic stuff you're gonna get minimal, if any, return on those investments. What you are gonna get return on investments are is horsepower, um, canvas options in a lot of situations, unless it's just over the top for the style of boat that you have uh, and covers. And you're gonna get additional value um, out of electronics. So uh, trolling motors, I'll throw that in there as well. Those are some of the major areas where you're gonna get the extra value. But if you got the extra filler cushion, are you upgraded to the uh, the optional filler seat? Are you upgraded to something along those lines? It's not going to give you the extra value. Maybe on a pontoon, maybe the in-store skis locker is going to help you sell the boat faster, but it's not going to give you a tremendous amount of extra value. Um, so consider that as you're ordering your boat. What I tell people if they're really value conscious is just get the biggest horsepower you can on the size boat that's right for you and leave all the other options off unless they're gonna seriously impact your boating fund. Uh, and that's a personal preference. You don't, you don't buy a boat to save money. So don't avoid the stuff that's gonna add fun for you and that's really important. Just understand you're not getting a lot of that money back on the resale side. Next is when you use your boat, use it properly. So if you're putting it on the dock, use fenders. 
Make sure you tie it off properly because that's a lot of times where some of the dings and scratches. I've seen gel coat that at, on a boat that's a year old that's just a disaster because they never put fenders out uh, because they didn't tie their boat up properly. And, and those are things or, or put it on the trailer properly and they got scratches all up and down the bow because they didn't they didn't hit the bow stop right because they backed in too deep. Those are the types of things that while you're using it can help you get more out of it because when they walk up to the boat, the first thing that they they notice is how great of condition it is versus, wow, look at those gouges. I wonder if that's too far through the gel coat uh, and it's letting water in the boat. Like some of these things, first time boat owners, they just don't know that that's just a scratch. It's just cosmetic, but they think, oh, maybe, maybe it's structural. Maybe it's getting water in there. So take care of it. Next is know how to operate and dock your boat. I can almost guarantee that this ding is because they came into the docks and they turned too sharp and they swung their swim platform into an obstruction, into a dock or another boat. That's why we have our, our best boat captain program. You can go to nomoredockingstress.com and you can avoid that problem because you'll learn how to, how to operate your boat. If you want to increase your resale value, fixing some of these small gel coat things, patching it even yourself. If you go to West Marine and get a good gel coat patch that's going to match the color, is that can help. If you can do it yourself, all the better. It can be a little expensive to have a service shop do it, but if you can find somebody to repair that, again, that first impression isn't, Ugh, look at that. I wonder what other damage that I haven't seen yet. And that's their first thought versus, wow, this boat looks great. So avoid them all together if you can by knowing how to operate your boat. And if you've got some little ones that are repairable by yourself, go ahead and, and give it a shot because the, those patch kits, you got to take your time. You got to be meticulous, but you can do them yourself with, uh, without too much um, knowledge. A couple of YouTube videos by uh, Boatworks Now, I think. Uh, Andy up there uh, is a great one to watch on how to do these types of repairs. Next, use your cover for sure. That's going to keep your boat in great shape, but make sure all the extra stuff is in good condition as well. You know, you can avoid some of these rips and tears on your covers by by using them the right way, using the poles and not letting water pool, laying towels over areas where they might have some rubbing and some chafing so that it, it rubs on that towel versus on your canvas cover. But those types of extra stuff are going to make people think, oh crap, I've got to buy a thousand dollar cover right off the bat. So what happens? Well, I'm not going to pay an extra thousand dollars because this cover is destroyed. So looking at those types of things and thinking it from the buyer's perspective of what will I have to spend to get this boat the way I want to get it um, right out of the gate? That's going to take money off your sales price instantly. So if you can if you can avoid having those issues to start or address them in some way, even even having a canvas guy sew in a patch on that could be an inexpensive way um, to add value to the boat when you go to resell it. Now, another one is make sure you have a pricing strategy with your boat. I recommend when you go to sell, when you go to buy as well, do this uh, to make sure you're not overpaying. But on the resale side, make sure that you check what's the market look like. Go to Facebook Marketplace, go to Boat Trader, go to Craigslist, depending on the style of boat that you have. The lower the price of the boat, the more I would lean towards Facebook Marketplace Craigslist. The higher, the more I'm going to look at Boat Trader and Facebook Marketplace. Those are two great spots. And if you have a center console or a pontoon or an inboard, go to the only inboard, center consoles only, use pontoon boats for sale. Go to those sites to really get a sense of what's the market doing. And then go to what I refer to as NADA. JD Powers bought them a couple years ago, so it's now branded JD Power. But go there, you can go online, just uh, nadaguides.com is how I get there, even though it's now JD Power, and go to the boat section and see what does your boat look like? What's the value of it? Now, remember when I said some of the items don't add to the resale? So you can't add all of the options like stereo and navigation lights and snap-in carpet. If most boats in your category have those things, you're kind of double dipping. Uh, but if you've got a wakeboard tower and that's not common for your style of boat, um, or you've got a canvas cover and that's not common for your style of boat or electronics or a trolling motor uh, or a trailer. Make sure you add those items in because you will get value for those and you won't be uh, over exaggerating your price. And then what you've got to do on the pricing strategy is price it high enough so that there's a little bit of room for negotiation, but not too high that people don't even engage with you. Um, so when you post it on Boat Trader, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, only inboards, use pontoon boats for sale, um, uh, center consoles only. 
make sure are the the local version of those in your area, the local groups in your area, if those are allowed, make sure that you have that boat priced in a range that it's going to be attractive, but it's not too low that they're not going to be able to negotiate a little bit and feel good about making the buying decision. It's not too high that you're getting no traffic. So what I recommend is start higher, especially if you're not in a hurry, start a little bit higher and then ratchet it down by, you know, 500, depending on the value of your boat, 500 or a thousand dollars at a time until that phone starts ringing. That's when you know that you priced at a level that, okay, there's interest. If the phone's not ringing, you're too high. Uh, and that goes for most markets. Now, if you're in December, January, it's a little bit different. So the timing of your sale, that's also very critical. If you want to get the highest resale value, well, you sell it when the most buyers are in the market. And that is April. And, and I kind of got a line through April because it depends. If you're further north, that's after tax day. If you're further south, that could be April 1st. It could be earlier in April or, or right when the boat show is in your area. That's another good time to sell because people are excited about buying boats. They go to the boat show and they're like, holy crap, 150,000 for a new whatever. Um, that We can't afford that. Our budget's 75 or our budget's 100 or our budget's 25 or 10, whatever. Then they'll go to the pre-owned market and that's where your boat comes in. So during the boat show season, and then after tax day is kind of a good time. They've got their refund. They're done with that. If they're business owners, they know what their tax liability is. They know what they they look like for the next year. And then May, right before Memorial Day, June before the 4th of July. And then after the 4th of July, things start to slow down. Um, you can get away with selling in later in July if it's a warmer client. But once you get to August and people start thinking school starting soon, Labor Day's right around the corner, the market really, really slows down. So the heat of the market is, now I'm going to say April 15th to July 15th. That's the timing that is really good. Now, those times a couple weeks before Memorial Day and a couple weeks before 4th of July, first time boaters or even, even any boaters are like, hey, I want that new boat for that big boating weekend, okay? So that's on the timing what's going to be value for you. If you're looking to buy a boat, grab the Boat Buyer's Toolkit. Uh, if you found this video valuable, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you like more content like this. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.